Hey all you people and welcome back in to my two days of draft coverage a year. Uh, what we're going to do today is we are going to go through a seven round Bengals mock draft as you can see up there and from here. Uh, so yeah, seven round Bengals mock draft and then I'm going to give a full first round mock. But before we get into the... Uh, Bengals specific one I do want to at least show off my big board show where my thinking is for where I want us to go tomorrow night so this is my big board um some of these players mo majority of these players probably will not be there by the time that we pick which is fine but I'm just gonna go through my reasoning for them really fast uh Kalijah Kansi at the top some mocks have him going in the top 10 some have him going 30 in my opinion, he's the second best uh, defensive tackle in the draft. So if he's there, take him. Again, it's hard to say if he's going to go in the top 10 or if he's going to go 30-something. But I hope that he's there when we get the chance to pick. Uh, then there's uh, Brzee. Breezy is how I've always pronounced it, which I think is wrong, but Brzee. Uh He's out of Clemson. Another really good defensive tackle that I think is also up on that level of camp or not right now up on that level, but could get up to that level of Kansi. Third is uh, Mayer, tight end, Notre Dame. I think he's better than Kincaid. Uh, realistically, what I wanted when we started going through the draft process was that I wanted um, preferably either a D-tackle or an offensive tackle in the first round. Then we could pick up Sam, La Sam Laporta in the second round. I don't see that happening anymore. <laughs> Uh, Sam Laporta's shop draft board, so I think Mayer with the with our first round pick would still be a good option. Uh, then we have Forbes, cornerback. A lot of people are just basically talking about him as a new Trayvon Diggs. I'd like playmaking corners. That'd be a lot of fun to see. We don't really need uh, like everybody's talking about how we need massive secondary help. We do not need massive secondary help. Yes, we lost Jesse Bates. Yes, we lost lost Von Bell. We drafted Dax Hill to replace one of them anyway. And then we also also signed Nick Scott, who is, is definitely a downgrade. But acting like we don't have uh, defensive backs anymore, like PFF, some other people, Tom Grassi, Brandon Perna. I'm looking at you calling me out on GPS for that. <laughs> uh, some people say that we don't have defensive backs. Um, and then, so yeah, it'd be nice to, it, it, it'd be nice to have another corner. Last last player is Jones, offensive tackle, Ohio State. Um, we don't we don't like truly truly need him. In theory, if Leo Collins gets healthy, if we don't trade Jonah Williams, then we shouldn't take him. But if if dr come draft night we trade Jonah Williams, I think that he's a very good pick for us to have because Leo Collins just struggles to stay healthy. I moved the big board down here uh, for. The Bengals-specific one, we're going to be using uh, ESPN Analytics for the mock draft. For my full first-round mock draft, it is going to be on PFF. You can't select multiple teams on here, so there isn't a reason for me to try... Or There isn't an ability for me to do my mock draft on here. So, uh, we are set to Bengals. We're set to light speed and seven rounds. We're going to load into the draft. Let's see what we get. Start draft. Oh, wow, that is fast. Okay. Um, let's see. So, looking for Cansey. Uh, let's, look, let's, let's look at who got picked and where they got picked. Okay, so Mayer got picked there. Forbes got picked. No! Oh, that's so sad. So, Cansey taken, Mayer, and Forbes all taken. So, that leaves Brzee and Jones. Um, it looks like Brzee is still on the board. Breezy, Breezy, I'm going to pronounce his name wrong probably forever. So it looks like he's still on the board. They have, am I just missing him? Oh no, he's way down here. They have Mozzie Smith ahead of him. I think that Breezy is a better prospect than Smith. Prospect than Smith. So we're going to take Breezy. Now something I have noticed with ESPN is, yeah, uh, this simulator for some, or in their analytics for some reason, hate Dewan Jones. So first two rounds, you're pretty much always able to get them. Um, however, I am going to look at something at, okay. 
Sam Laporta went three picks earlier. Okay. That was the other one I was going to look at. So, second round, we take DeWan Jones. And third round. Let's see. Luke Schoonmaker. Schoonmaker? I don't know how to pronounce his name. Is there. Um, what running backs are available? Okay. I'm fine passing on running back here because, yes, we probably need to take one at some point, but this is a bit early to take one of those people. Could take Hodges Tomlinson. I think it may just be Shoemaker, though. I think I think that's the right pick there. All right. And fourth round. Tank and Dwayne McBride are here. I think Tank is a better prospect than Dwayne McBride. Maybe I'm just... I, like, I don't know why I have bias towards Auburn, but I do like Auburn for some reason. So I think we're going to take Tank Bigsby. Fourth round. Uh, fifth round. I lost sight of what was happening here for a minute. Okay. So, so far we've taken a D tackle, a right tackle, a tight end, and a running back. So maybe some DB help. Like this Anthony Johnson Jr. We're into the section of the draft where most people don't truly... Like, you're, you're taking shots in the dark. Somehow Dwayne McBride is here a uh, uh, hundred picks later, honestly. <laughs> like, realistically, you're in, the, you're in the shots in the dark range. If he is still here at this point, I would not be mad at us taking both uh, Tank and Dwayne McBride, hoping one of the two hits. And Brandon Hill for our last pick. The thing I do like about ESPN is that it has chance available at pick, which is a nice thing to see. Um, so it says that there's a 71% chance Brzee is there at 28. I don't think that's going to be true, but it says that. 72% chance for Dewan Jones. I don't think that he drops to 60. I think that's ridiculous. I think he's probably top 40. Uh, Schoonmaker, eh, 75% chance still feels high, but like, okay. There's no reason there should be a 33% chance that Dwayne McBride drops to 206, though. But yeah, I think I'd be happy with this. It's not like the ideal scenario, but this is definitely like a scenario I would at least be content with. So as you can see, I am not a PFF subscriber. So we are not going to be able to do trades in my mock draft, which is fine. I don't really like projecting trades just because having to deal with compensation is a bit excessive for somebody doing two videos about draft in a year on a gaming channel, primarily. <laughs> um, so we, I have done, I have done this already. I do have it set up next to me on the side here so that I can just go through and get it done like how I want my mock setup. I am happy with what I have set up. So yeah, let's just get into it. Panthers are obviously, they're not going to trade out the number one overall pick. There's no reason to trade up to number one then be like, oh, we're trading back now. Doesn't make sense. Um, the rumors in the last week have started to shift more and more. That was not, that was not a trade up for CJ Stroud. It was a trade up for Bryce Young. So actually I'm going to try to zoom this in a bit. There we go. Hopefully that's better. Because I, I remember last year it was a bit like zoomed out. Um, so maybe one more. That's a bit big, but that's okay by me. So anyway, uh, the originally people were thinking it was going to be CJ Stroud because everybody's like, oh, Bryce Young is so small. I don't see a world anymore where that happens. Bryce Young is going number one overall to the Panthers. Rumors have been circulating in the last in the last week or so, though, that the Texans are not going to take a quarterback with their number two pick. I think it's a bad decision, but given the Texans, I could see them potentially playing for the fact of next year get Caleb Williams, get Drake May, get one of those guys instead and just get a cornerstone piece in Will Anderson instead. I have gone back and forth on the on the Cardinals pick here, actually. And I think I'm going to switch it. Originally, I had them taking Jalen Carter. Given some of the concerns that have risen with him, I think it makes a lot more sense 
for them to take Tyree Wilson, who for some reason is way down here on PFF's board. I don't know why. He's been shooting up recently in the last couple weeks. Like, even if you look at... Oh, wow, he's actually at his lowest right now. But <laughs> if you talk, if you look at the commentators, uh, Tyree Wilson is shooting up. Some are even saying the Texans may take him with two. I think he goes at three to the Cardinals. At four, I don't think the Colts are going to mess around here. If anybody true... Like, I get I am biased... There is an Ohio against the world flag right above the camera right now. Not not here, but literally here in real life above the camera. Realistically, if anybody thinks that CJ Stroud is worse, or if Will Levis is better than CJ Stroud, I don't know what is wrong with you. I hated on CJ Stroud his entire way through Ohio State, and I still think he is better than Will Levis. Colts are taking CJ Stroud if that was not apparent. So, this is the pick swap I had now. I originally had the Cardinals taking Jalen Carter and the Seahawks taking Tyree Wilson. I think that given the Cardinals taking Tyree Wilson, that just flips Jalen Carter, goes to the Seahawks. Lions. It doesn't have it listed as a team need. However, they did just trade Jeff Okuda Another Ohio State product that has flamed out. Anyway, um, they did just trade him. I think with Jalen Carter off the board is in their best interest to take Devin Witherspoon here and get a new cornerback. Raiders. They need to take a QB. Even though they have Garoppolo, they need... The point of signing Garoppolo is to get somebody behind Garoppolo to develop for the future. So... Is that Levis or is that Richardson? I think it's Levis. I think I think Richardson has the higher has the higher ceiling, but I think Levis is a safer pick for the Raiders. And that is and so they're gonna and so yeah, Raiders are gonna take Levis. And now I just talked about how great Anthony Richardson is, and a lot of people see him going to the Falcons here. There is no way that Richardson goes to the Falcons. I can just feel it in my gut. There is no way Richardson is going to the Falcons. They are going to reach, way reach for Nolan Smith. I don't know why. It's just a gut feeling, but there is no possible way the Falcons are taking Anthony Richardson. Bears, I mean, like, they're going to protect, they're going to protect Fields. Going to take Skaronsky, best, best tackle. He's amazing prospect. Hope, in theory, a surefire pick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Eagles. Given recent mocks, like given recent mocks, is looking more and more likely that Bijan is going to go higher in the first round, and that Jameer Gibbs is also going to go somewhere in the first round. For this reason, I don't think the Eagles are going to be content to take their running back with their second pick. I think they're going to take it here and take Bijan. Titans. There's a lot of rumors that the Titans really like Stroud. But given the fact that Stroud has just gone to a division rival, I don't see a world where they take Richardson instead. I don't think that that's a compare like a I don't think that's comparable for them to want to take Stroud then take Anthony Richardson instead. So for that reason, I am having them take Paris Johnson instead. Texans, again, I just... It's not that I don't like Anthony Richardson, to be clear. It's just people are, are playing like the Falcons, the Texans, the Titans as the picks, as the fits for Richardson. I don't see that making sense. I don't see the Texans saying, we want Anthony Richardson under center for us for the future. I see them as we want to build the pieces so that next so that next year we can draft the QB and they will have the pieces in place. So they're going to take Jackson Smith and the Jigba, JSN, 12th overall, Gale wide receiver on the team. They didn't get Stroud second overall like they were originally planned like originally everybody was saying they would. But yeah. Side note, I'm very glad I waited as long as I could to record this. Because it doesn't make... Actually, it does make a pretty big difference. Eh. 
it doesn't make that that big of a difference that the Packers pick 13th versus 15th and vice versa for the Jets. However, it has also come to light that the Packers are apparently enamored with Kincaid. And if if those reports are true, then there's no reason to not... Th- uh, with JSN off the board, I think if he's on the board, Packers take him. But since he's off the board, I think Kincaid goes here. Patriots. I've kept this one the same forever. They're not taking Anthony Richardson. Like, maybe Mac Jones is out of favor. Maybe that's true. I don't see them taking a first-round QB to replace him this year. With Paris, with uh, Paris Johnson off the board, I don't see them reaching for, Broad, for Broderick or Darnell Wright. <laughs> reaching for Darnell Wright. That, you'll see why that's funny in a minute. Uh, I've had them since the beginning taking Lucas Van Ness. I think, it's, I think he's a very good prospect. I think he's going to do very well. And now why I said it's funny that I'd say that that's a reach, because exactly the next pick, I have the Jets taking Darnell Wright. I think he is better than Broderick, even though PFF thinks differently. I just think that he is going to do better. And, yeah, he he can play both sides. So, like, yeah, I think he's, I think he's just the better choice. The commies. I think the commies see this board... And they see Anthony Richardson, Christian Gonzalez, Kalijah Kansi, all still on the board. I th- I legitimately think that they could take any of the three of these guys. I think that they see Christian Gonzalez though, and that and they take him. I think that he is the best of of these three remaining. How he slips this far in my mock, I don't know. It happens every single time I do it though. I just don't see any of these teams taking. Uh, cor- uh, cornerbacks and so Christian Gonzalez goes to the commies Steelers everybody's projecting this pick I'm not I'm not breaking the mold they're going for the legacy of Joey Porter Jr. I'm not saying anything more than that on that <laughs> the Lions this is the sticking point every single mock I do it frustrates me so much but I don't see Cansey making it past here. This is where Kalijah Cansey goes. He goes to the Lions at 18. After my hopes have gotten up, after he falls out of the top 10, he almost gets to, to the 20s. That's where Kalijah Cansey goes. Buccaneers. They have Baker Mayfield as their QB. I don't even... is, is Who even is their tight end right now? I don't know. Long story short, this is where Richardson finally goes. They have Baker in front of him, so Richardson can can have time to develop behind him. Baker's not going to go and win you tons and tons of playoff games. He probably is, but he's probably going to play well enough that you play yourself out of the top players next year. So I think if Richardson falls this far, the Buccaneers are going to take him. Seahawks. Where am I? Oh. Seahawks. Uh, took Jalen Carter that t- Oh, oh shoot. This is actually a shakeup because they took Jalen Carter. Because originally, I have them taking Brzee here. But because they took a D, a D tackle, they now take Miles Murphy instead. They, take the, they flip where they get their uh, D tackle and their edge. They're going to take Miles Murphy. Chargers. Wide receiver as a need still feels really odd to me. However, they don't have Mike Williams or Keenan Allen under contract in two years' time. Neither of them. This is not a pick for the now. It's a pick for the future. And they take Zay Flowers. They need to have some wide receivers in the room still when those two get up to contract time. So they take Zay Flowers. Ravens. I know they assigned OBJ, but similar thing. They just don't have wide receivers. They never do. They're going to take Jordan Addison. I think that the Vikings would have taken Zay Flowers or Jordan Addison. I don't see them taking Quentin Johnston. I think that that's a reach. I, I don't think he's bad. But there's no reason that 
you should have three straight wide receivers off the board. Like, they are not that close in skill level. Long story short, they're going to address one of their other needs, and it's corner. They're going to take Deontay Banks, who has who fell a little bit, actually. Jags, I don't want to say it's like best player available, but it's kind of best player available. I have them taking Brian Branch here. I think that having him at pick 24 is a good pick. I get he's a safety. I think that there's like some rumors of him like just being a generic DB, but... I think that he's a good pick there. It's late enough in the first round to consider taking a safety. And I think that they're going to get a good guy out of him. <laughs> I do like how I said at 23, uh, Johnston was too much of a uh, too much of a reach. And then I have him going at 25. But the difference between the Vikings and the Giants. The Vikings have Justin Jefferson. <laughs> the Giants do not. <laughs> <laughs> Cowboys. Oh, boy. Okay. If the rumors are true... I'm going to look at the analysis. If the rumors are true, Jerry Jones loves Michael Mayer. So... Michael Mayer. <laughs> that does leave... Uh, Actually, hold on. I'll, I'll wait a sec. Uh, we'll go through the Bills pick. I specifically asked Bills fans who they wanted people to take here. Forbes was a common answer. To be clear, I asked five Bills fans. Two gave me Forbes. Three gave Jameer Gibbs. Get a running back that is not... I think Damian Harris is their current running back. Get Jameer Gibbs. Get him on the Bills. Get a running back that is actually decent to work with Josh Allen. All right, so looking at our board. Kalijah Kansi goes here. Brzee originally, I believe, went here instead on my board, on my mock. Yeah, Brzee went here instead. However, Murphy now goes there. So Brzee's available. Mayer goes here. Forbes is available. And Dewan Jones is available. If the Bengals have the pick between Forbes, uh, Forbes, Jones, and Brzee, hmm, that's tough. Because originally when I did this, it was a pick between Forbes and Jones, which in my opinion, Forbes is a far more likely option than Jones is. Oh, why, did I, why didn't I just follow what I did? <laughs> I think if Forbes and Brzee are still here, I think that we take, I think we take Forbes if this is the current board. I think I would prefer Brzee as of right now, but I think the Bengals would take Forbes over Brzee. Oh no, this is where my stuff starts to get a little bit tangled because of other choices. Um, Saints. Saints, Saints, Saints. You know what? No, actually, this just this just works out. Saints, I'll give Brzee. <laughs> Originally, I had them taking Miles Murphy, so those just end up flipping spots. Ten picks later, or nine picks later, but they, just flip, they flip who takes them, effectively. Eagles, they got their running back with pick 10. I think that then leads them to take... I, I think it's Mazzy Smith. It could be here, it could, it could be Osiris, but I think it's Mazzy. They take Mazzy Smith. And then the Chiefs with the final pick of the first round, are going to take Will McDonald. Notable dropper is Broderick Jones. I don't think he drops because he's bad. I think that he is probably worthy of this top 20. But given how the rest of the board fell, I just don't see a spot that he would go reasonably. The only place I could see it is the Steelers. 
But I think the Steelers are going to put too much into having that Joey Porter back. So I think that I think that he just ends up dropping, which again, no fault of his own. I think he's going to be great, but there's it's it's the sad reality of draft day and how the boards t- fall. So Will McDonald is the final pick of the first round. Now, oh, uh, I need to zoom out for this one. All right, here is my first round. It is Bryce Young first overall to the Panthers, Will Anderson to the Texans, Tyree Wilson to the Cardinals, Stroud to the Colts, Carter to the Seahawks, Witherspoon to the Lions, Levis to the Raiders, Smith to the uh, Falcons, Skaronsky to the Bears, Bijan to the Eagles, Paris Johnson to the Titans, JSN to the Texans, Kincaid to the Packers, Van Ness to the Pats, Wright to the Jets, Gonzalez to the Commies, Porter to the Steelers, Canty to the Lions, Richardson to the Bucks. I got so I real quick, I know I'm just reading off right now. I got so much backlash for saying Richardson's gonna drop this far. I will say counterpoint last year's draft class. I think in my mock I had like five I didn't have five. I think I had three go in the first round. I don't know. I can go back and look at that. I didn't do that beforehand because I didn't think I was going to bring it up. I think I had three go in the first round. But I don't think I... Actually, I had Malik Willis go in the top ten. Did I? I can't remember. Anyway, we saw last year that teams are not going to, to overreach. Richardson feels like... I'm not saying he... Again, I'm trying to... Like, I, I, I'm not saying he's bad. I don't want to act like he's not good. But it's all potential. And drafting a, a person with potential in the top... That's 100% potential in the top 10 just doesn't feel as smart, I guess. Like, Richardson went, like, 5-7 and seven in college at Florida. Like, he his athleticism is off the charts. I'm sure he can develop to be good. But there... But, I don't see any of these teams up to 12 taking him. Anyway, Seahawks get Miles Murphy. Two straight wide receivers. Flowers to the Chargers and Addison to the Raiders. Or Ravens, not Raiders. Ravens. Banks to the Vikings. Branch to the Jags. Johnston to the Giants. Mayer to the Cowboys. Gibbs to the Bills. Forbes to the Bengals. Brzee to the Saints. Smith to the Eagles. And Will McDonald the fourth to the Chiefs. That is my first round mock. Um, if you are seeing this on release day, tomorrow night I will be streaming the draft. So uh, come over to the link in the description and you can uh, come watch it live with me. I will have Valero on for a little bit, I think, right now. Uh, he is a Colts fan, so I'm really hoping that he's there at, right at the beginning. So... Hopefully we can uh, get a reaction to him seeing that. And, yeah. Uh, let me know what, what you think. Uh, let me know what you disagree with. I've been told there are some controversial picks in my mock. That's okay. I'm okay with that. I'm not here. I'm here to do what I think is going to happen, not what everybody else thinks is going to happen. And this is what I think has a very high chance of happening. I did change around some players from when I had it on my side screen, but that's okay. I think either either the drafts I have done, the one on my side screen, the one right in front of me, in front of you guys, either of them could be what ends up happening, and I would not be shocked. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Um, if you can't, uh, real fast, if you can't make it to the stream tomorrow, um... I will be ju- just posting this stream wholesale onto YouTube on Friday. So, yeah. Two days of draft content, wh- the Wednesday before draft day, and the Friday after draft day. So, yeah. Thank you all so much for watching. If you made it here, you probably enjoyed. If you listen to me rambling about about random college football players for the last 29 minutes and 50 seconds, give or take, You probably enjoyed it, so please leave a like, please subscribe, and yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Peace.